Hello, my name is Kevin Maher, and this week I'll be introducing My Man Godfrey for our continuing Beyond the Bay virtual film series. Released in 1936 by Universal Studios and starring William Powell and Carol Lombard, My Man Godfrey can best be described as a fairy tale, with a handsome prince rescuing a damsel in distress from the clutches of an evil princess. That the prince lives at the city dump and the damsel can best be described as off a rocker is a minor, minor trifle. There is a court jester, but let's be clear, he's not a gigolo, he's a protege. The queen is as loopy as a drunken sailor, and the king is not so much benevolent as completely exasperated. Finally, when a stolen necklace turns into gold, you can rest assured that everyone lives happily ever after, albeit at the city dump. Okay, so my man Godfrey isn't quite a fairy tale, but as a stellar representation of 1930s screwball comedy, it's practically unmatched. The story unfolds in 94 crisp minutes, literally without a chance to catch its breath. The story actually takes place in New York at the height of the Depression, and is as much about class differences, but not so much the class that money brings, but class that is reflected in taking care of one another. Godfrey, played by Powell, is out of luck, existing in as civilized a depression area Hooverville as you're likely to come across, when he is rescued by Irene Bullock, played by Lombard, as part of a high society scavenger hunt to find a forgotten man. Powell agrees to participate, in part for the $5 reward, but also to chastise the upper crusters by calling them empty-headed nitwits before agreeing to become the Bullock's butler. Powell was at the height of his success, coming off a starring role in 1935's Oscar-winning Best Picture, The Great Ziegfeld. After starting his career playing villains in Paramount Pictures' silent films, he made his name as Detective Philo Vance in a series of early talkies. With his career floundering, however, he moved over to MGM, was paired with Myrna Loy in the classic screwball detective movie The Thin Man, and his superstar status was established. Powell owed Universal a movie, however, and agreed to star in My Man Godfrey for the studio, provided his ex-wife, Carol Lombard, would co-star. He also stipulated that this agreement be kept secret. Lombard herself was riding a hot streak that started in 1934, with the release of the comedy 20th Century, where she played a high-strung emerging actress opposite the brilliant John Barrymore. The film was made on loan out to Columbia Pictures and is often cited as the first true screwball comedy. Lombard was a contract player at Paramount, but there was a dearth of leading men at the studio beyond the Marx Brothers, so her options had been limited. If not for a co-starring role in No Man of Her Own opposite Clark Gable, himself on loan out from MGM, her options were limited to the steady but unspectacular Fred McMurray. While she was pay paid less than one half of Powell's $87,000, Lombard was happy to take the role and was rewarded with her only Oscar nomination. Director and uncredited co-screenwriter Gregory LaCava, who also received an Academy Award nomination for My Man Godfrey, has long been overlooked as one of the most consistent and talented directors of the 1930s. He had started out as a political cartoonist and animator for William Randolph Hearst before graduating to feature films in the late silent era, most notably working with W.C. Fields. By the time he started shooting Godfrey, LaCava had established himself as a comedy director of the highest order, notable for his relaxed camera work, improvisational directing style, and enjoyable and relaxed sets. The following year, he would again be nominated for Best, Director, this, Best Director, this time for the classic film Stage Door. But raging alcoholism cut short his career, with only a handful of directing jobs throughout the 1940s. LaCava's improvisational style and subtle camera work, however, pay particularly high dividends in My Man Godfrey. By allowing the actors to shine and fully inhabit their parts, LaCava let the film come to him. My Man Godfrey is a wonderful example of how perfect casting with a tight and refined script can create shortcuts that simultaneously move the plot, expose character, and share themes. Watch this meet-cute scene between Lombard and Powell that accomplishes quite a bit in a little more than one minute of screen time. How are you? Hi, my Irene. That was my sister Cornelia who pushed in the ash pile. How would you like to have me push Cornelia's sister into an ash pile? Oh, I don't think I'd like it. Well, then you better get out of here. Well, you bet. Wait a minute. 
Sit down. I'm sitting. What's up, Duke? Need some help? No, thank you, boys. Got everything under control. You a member of this hunting party? I was, but I'm not now. Are they all forgotten men, too? Yes, I guess they are. Maybe why? That's the funniest thing. I couldn't help but laugh. I wanted to do that ever since I was six years old. You wanted to do what? Oh, push Cornelia in something, a pile of ashes or something. You know, that was faithful George with it. That isn't really his name, but we call him that because he gets in everybody's hair. His father's a broker. That's very enlightening. <laughs> Cornelia thought she was going to win and you pushed her in a pile of ashes. <laughs> Do you think you could follow a intelligent conversation for just a moment? I'll try. Well, that's fine. Do you mind telling me just what a scavenger hunt is? Well, a scavenger hunt is exactly like a treasure hunt. Except in a treasure hunt, you try to find something you want. And in a scavenger hunt, you try to find something that nobody wants. Like a forgotten man. That's right. And the one that wins gets a prize. Only there really isn't a prize. It's just the honor of winning because all the money goes to charity. That is, if there's any money left over, but then there never is. Mm. Well, that... Mm -hmm. Clears the whole matter up beautifully. You know, I've decided I don't want to play any more games with human beings as objects. It's kind of sordid when you think of it. I mean, when you think it over. Yeah, then I don't know. I haven't thought it over. Uh, yeah, I don't like to change the subject, but do you tell me why you live in a place like this when there's so many other nice places? You really want to know? Oh, I'm very curious. Mm. It's because my real estate agent felt that the altitude would be very good for my asthma. Oh, well, my uncle has asthma. No. Oh. Well, now there's a coincidence. Godfrey's pride, intelligence, and wit are immediately apparent. He calls out Irene's stream of consciousness speaking pattern, his willingness to exact revenge on Irene's sister for her dismal treatment of him, and even shares a flicker of attraction to Irene. She, on the other hand, fully displays her ditziness, but also reveals a deeper concern that what she's doing is wrong. All of this, of course, also supports several themes of the film, that class isn't tied to wealth and poverty isn't tied to choice. Perfect ideas for a depressionary audience. Godfrey is the calm that the tornado of chaos called the Bullock household revolves around. As each character in the household is introduced, it reinforces the idea of that chaos with LaCava using editing, sound, both on screen and off, as well as camera movement to create multi-layered comedic effects. Each char character, from the maid to the mother, both daughters, the father, and finally Carlo, the protege, is given a momentary individual spotlight for Godfrey to act opposite. Look, Irene, look at Carlo. Is that lovely? Oh, is that clever, Irene? Look. Powell's placid demeanor reflects the genius of most screwball comedies, in that they used actors and actresses that were primarily dramatic performers to imbue the comedy with a great deal of gravitas and heighten the absurdity. Powell perfected the sideways glance and the sophisticated speaking style that added grace and elegance to his characters. Lombard, for her part, was willing to forego traditional Hollywood glamour for the sake of comedy. Viewed as one of the most beautiful actresses of the 1930s, as well of, as well as one of its most intelligent, Lombard, Lombard had no qualms about undermining that beauty and intelligence to create over-the-top misfits that were her stock in trade throughout the screwball era. She gives herself completely to Irene Bullock, and her performance saves the character. If Powell's Godfrey is the central for force holding the story together, it's Lombard's interpretation of Irene that makes the film work. Her line readings are spot on, reflecting the perfection of the entire cast, but it is her facial contortions that speak to her inner thoughts and emotions. The exaggerated frowns, the mooning lovesickness, and her crying fits propel the up and down of Irene like a yo-yo. 
Godfrey is benevolent, grateful, and self-aware enough to see the good in the Bullocks, even as a representation of the upper-class wealth he had sought to escape. As Godfrey tells his friend Tommy in a rare moment of seriousness in the middle of the film, the only difference between a derelict and a man is a job. A popular sentiment, I'm sure, at the time. The line grounds the film and tempers its frivolousness, but only for a moment. In the end, it is Godfrey, not surprisingly, who comes to the rescue of the family, flipping on its head one of the basic tenets of the screwball comedy, that, that being that a smarter and more intuitive woman leads a pompous and self-righteous man to realize the opposite, the obvious. The freewheeling craziness, the romantic chemistry of Lombard and Powell, and the brilliance of the supporting cast combine to create comedic gold in My Man Godfrey. But it also allows director LaCava to subtly push an agenda often overlooked in films of the era. Please join us for a live Q&A discussion of My Man Godfrey on the Bay Theater's YouTube channel on February 9th at 7.30 p.m. Go to thebaytheater.com for a direct link. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the notifications bell to get updates on new videos and upcoming Beyond the Bay events. Thank you for watching and please enjoy the film.